Two of these Mitutoyo calipers are genuine, and two of them are not. Can you tell the difference? Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. About a year and a half ago, I made a video comparing cheap and expensive digital calipers, and that video has proven pretty popular to date. About a quarter million of you have watched it, and about a thousand have left comments. I got a new comment on that video a couple of weeks ago saying that right now eBay is flooded with brand new Mitutoyu calipers for very good prices. And I thought it might be fun to pick up a couple of those, put them side by side with the genuine article and see what we can see. By the way, this is going to be a pretty detailed video, so if there's something specific you want to see, feel free to use the chapter markers to skip around. Let's take a look at what we got. Now I've got four examples here. I've got a four inch, a six inch, an eight inch, and a 12 inch. Now the four inch and the six inch, I believe are genuine. The six inch I purchased about two years ago, and I purchased this from Amazon, shipped from and sold by Amazon itself. You have to be a little bit careful with Amazon and actually check the seller that's selling the items that you purchase, but there are a whole bunch of even third party sellers like Travers Tool who are legitimate distributors of Me To Toyo products. Like I said, I think this one's genuine, but just to be absolutely sure, I purchased a four inch uh, version. This one came from MSC Industrial and I purchased this just this week. So we have a modern example of one from a legitimate distributor that we know for sure is genuine. We have this one that I'm pretty confident is genuine, especially since these match so well. And we have the two that I just purchased on eBay. So just to give you an idea, if we're talking about the genuine Meet to Toyu product from an authorized distributor, the four inch right now is running about $130. The six inch is about the same price. The eight inch runs about 180 and the 12 inch runs 390. Now I paid pretty much list price for these. This was $120 a couple of years ago. This one was $130 this week, pretty much list. These two that came from eBay, the one that would be 180, I picked up for 70, and the one that would be 390, I picked up for 105. So if these turn out to be real, that's a heck of a deal. However, as you can already see, there are issues that are apparent. First thing is that the orange color on the box is not correct. It's much easier to see in person. I think it's visible on the camera though, but the orange on the two eBay purchases is a darker color of orange than on these two. And keep in mind, these two were purchased two years apart and they are exactly the same color. These are different. You'll also notice that these have the black stripes instead of the gray stripes on the known good instances. Just for comparison, here's another Meet to Toyu product box. And again, this is something that's easier to see in person. This color matches this very well, doesn't match this. Here's another, same thing. These companies tend to be very particular about their trademark colors and tend to be very careful about reproducing them in packaging. And uh, these two do not match. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put some colored tags on these. I'm gonna put a little red tag on the four inch, blue on the six, yellow on the eight inch and green on the 12 inch. And the reason is because when we pull the articles out, the documents and stuff, I'm gonna mark those as well, just so we don't get confused about which box they came out of. Now, if we look at the graphics on the front of the box, there are some additional clues. If you look at the M in the Mitutoyu uh, name, you'll note that it has these two stylized bars in the M and also over here in the Y. And those bars are the same width, spacing, and angle as the graphic elements of these stripes on the case. And the same thing is true on the six inch genuine caliper. But if we take a look at the eBay purchases, not only are the gray stripes black, you'll note that the angle and the spacing is not quite right. These lines are heavier than the lines in the logo and they're at a different angle. It's hard to see here, but the angle here, the M is laid over this direction and it does not match up. And the reason for that is because the logo has been stretched horizontally and its aspect ratio has not been maintained. You can see this if I put it next to the original, you can see this O is wider than this and it changed the angle in the logo so it doesn't match. And if we look at the 12 inch, 
the problem is even worse. There's additional space in here. This logo has been stretched vertically, so the line is too far this direction. And you can see not only is there more space, it's also at the wrong angle. And you can see that what's happened is it's a little bit more subtle, but this O is taller than this one because, again, it was stretched vertically. One other thing that is worth noting on these, if you look at the R on the end of caliper on the original, you'll note that the serif on the end of the R comes to a sharp point. On the two eBay instances, the serif comes to a blunt point. And the kerning on the letters and the weight of the letters, I mean, even the weight of the letters between these two eBay instances are different. And both of those are different than the weight of the letters on the genuine one. Now, if we turn the boxes up on edge, more problems become apparent. Uh, these are the two genuine articles, and you can see the fonts and the logos here are the same. These logos are like three little snowmen with their heads together. They are open in the center. They're not connected. You can see on this one, we've got complete closed shapes connected. They're not open like these are, and of course, the weight is quite a bit too heavy. On this one, we do have the snowman shapes, but the lines are too thin and there's too much space in here. And you can see that the kerning on the fonts are completely different. Like take a look at the space between the T, U, and T on the genuine one and take a look at it here. These are different fonts. They're kerned differently. They're stretched out differently. These, are, the, these two are completely different from the genuine ones. Now, actually looking at these in person, the imprint here that says Me to Toyu on here on the genuine ones are very nice and clean and consistent. The, this one is quite a bit deeper and it is unlevel from end to end, and this one is actually quite a bit shallower. And there's a difference in the surface texture of the plastic, but if you didn't have these right next to each other, you wouldn't be able to see that. On the back side, if we look at the genuine ones first, you can see we have two little polished ejector marks that are cut off nice and clean and shiny. And in the center, it says made in Japan. Here's a six inch, same thing. We've got nice clean ejector marks made in Japan. On both of the eBay instances, you don't have those ejector marks. You have this single injection point that's been cut off roughly with a pair of angle cutters. And if you look, there are no markings on the back at all to indicate the country of origin. It does not say made in Japan. It doesn't say anything. And in fact, there's no markings for the material where the genuine ones, you might just be able to see that say PP have a material marking on them. Let's take a look inside the boxes. This is the brand new four inch that came from MSC Industrial. And you see first we're greeted with the paperwork. The paperwork is nice and flat and intact. We've got a staple through here with a battery not installed in the caliper. And we have one package of documentation that's stapled and a separate certificate of inspection. We'll look at these in a minute. And then we have the caliper. The caliper is sealed in a bag. This is heat sealed on both ends. So this is not open, this is airtight. And inside we have the ferrobrite sheet. It uh, has some English on it and it's got Japanese on it. We'll take a look at the actual caliper that's in here in a minute as well. Let's take a look at the others. This is the six inch caliper. This one I've been using for a couple of years, so it's already open, but we have essentially the same paperwork. It's already been unstapled. Certificate of inspection. Note that all the paperwork is nice and flat and neat. And the reason for that is because if you look inside the lid here, we have these long studs that come down to retain the caliper, but this one over here is nice and shallow so that it doesn't push down and crumple the paperwork. That's nice attention to detail. If we look at the eight inch from eBay, first thing you'll note is that the paperwork is not nice and neat. It has been crumpled and mangled. And the reason for that is that instead of having our two studs down here and one shallow one here, you can see we've got two long studs here to hold down the caliper. And that of course has mangled the paperwork. 
and uh, we do have this stapled together. We do have a battery. It's upside down, which is a little bit unusual, but we'll look at that in detail later. And we have a nice crumpled certificate of inspection, and we will look at that as well. Caliper itself is in a bag. However, this bag is not sealed, and you can see it's a different material. We don't have the nice, clean, clear cellophane-like. This is a uh, much duller plastic. It is not sealed, and the ferrobrite that's in here uh, does not have any Japanese on it at all. It does have the name of a Japanese company and says it's in Tokyo, but there's no Japanese writing on here. I'm not saying that's an issue. It's definitely different, however. And if we look at the 12 inch, the situation is similar. We again have these long studs. The paperwork is crumpled and mangled. And again, the battery is upside down or stapled at the bottom, which again is different. Certificate of inspection. And again, the, bat, the bag is not sealed. Caliper is just loose in here. Uh, there is a ferrobrite, and again, it's the one that has none of the Japanese characters on it. Let's take a look at the paperwork, starting with the certificate of inspection. So here is the one from the genuine four inch, and we can see that it does have a printed signature on here. Now, uh, there's been a lot made of this on the internet that this should be handwritten and not printed, but it is printed on all the ones that I've found, and my understanding is that it's printed on the certificates now from the genuine ones. You note we do have the serial number on here, and I did confirm it does match the serial number on the, uh, on the caliper itself. If we look at the certificate that came with the six inch, we have exactly the same thing. It's nice and clean. The serial number is printed on here and we do have the printed signature. Now note that the print quality on this is really, really quite good. Now let's take a look at the first eBay one and you can immediately see that the print quality, there's a difference in the print quality. If I put these side by side, you can see that the genuine one is nice and clean. We've got thin, bold black letters, and it's a little heavier and a little less distinct. And especially you like it up here in this certificate of inspection, you can see the difference in resolution on those prints. Um, I don't know if you would necessarily see that if you had these, if you didn't have these side by side, but fortunately we have these side by side. The other thing to note is that while the serial number is printed on here, it's a mishit because this sheet was printed and then they came back and added the serial number printed onto it later using a different technology. It's a little bit lighter and a little bit lower resolution. And if we pull the certificate from the 12 inch, we see exactly the same thing. This one, they got it a little bit closer to centered, but it is bolder, the text is grayer, it's a different font. Um, this was printed on the certificate after the fact. If we look at some of the other documentation, we can unfold and look at, I'm trying to find a section here that's got some nice clean print. So this is from the genuine four inch and we can see the caliper here is nice and clean. You see the resolution on these numbers and even the very, very small text here nice and clean. If we look at our second genuine example, this is from uh, two years ago, but again, we see the same thing. We see nice, clean, distinct print. This is high resolution. This is a high quality print. All the text and lettering is very, very clear, even the very fine stuff. Now let's look at our first eBay example and you can see immediately that this is not the same. The fine details, the lettering in here is smeared together. The resolution of this text is lower. This is not the same kind of quality. This is a completely different thing. If we put these side by side and look at, like just for example, these numbers, here's the eBay example, here's the genuine Meet to Toyu. So these are, these are this is a much lower quality print. And if we look at the 12 inch example, we have exactly the same thing. Bold, mushy, indistinct print. This is not a quality print. This is a cost saving measure. This was not done by Meet Toyo.
The one other printed item that we can easily compare is this yellow tag that comes on the caliper telling us that we have to put the battery in first. This is of course the genuine four inch. And here next to it is the eight inch. So this at first glance actually looks pretty good. If you did not have these side by side, I don't think you would really notice anything here. There are definitely some differences if you take a look at the size of the number one here next to a battery and step and the size of the number one here. They are definitely different. These are different prints. If you look at the, 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 the text of first versus first here, these are definitely different prints, but again, if you just had only one of these in isolation, you probably would not be able to note that difference. And if we bring up the 12 inch example, uh, same thing. Again, the text here is just a little bit different. The, uh, the, the printing is just ever so slightly different, but again, if you didn't know what you were looking at here, there's probably not anything here to see. Let's take a closer look at the batteries. This is the one that came with the genuine four inch caliper that I purchased off of MSC. And we can see that this has the Michitoyu branding. It says that it's made by Seiko Instruments Incorporated. And we've got the uh, model of the battery, the SR44SW. And if you look at the battery that's actually in here, it is actually marked SR44SW. And you can see that it is marked says Japan on the battery. So this is exactly what we would expect is a Mitutoyu branded battery made by Seiko marked made in Japan. Now if we bring in one of these from one of the eBay calipers for comparison, you can see that the printing on here is uh, pretty convincing. It looks pretty much the same, SR44SW. You'll note however that the battery on the battery says SR44W it doesn't say SR44SW. It also has the 357 marking that the genuine one does not. And you'll also note that there is no marking indicating that it was manufactured in Japan. So the packaging is the same, the battery cell is different. And here's the other eBay one and it's exactly the same. Again, the packaging looks pretty legit. The, uh, the color is a little bit different. The color of the paper, again, it's hard to tell. This is a much warmer, there's a little more magenta in it. This is a much cleaner white color. I don't know if you can see that as well as I can, um, uh, not through the camera lens, but the, that, again, that's something you would never even notice. You would notice um, if you didn't have these side by side, the batteries are not marked in Japan made in Japan. Here's something else that's also sort of interesting. If we look at the back, um, I don't speak Japanese, but I have Google Translate, and this is the expiration date of the battery, which is March of 2024 for the genuine article. Now, if I bring in one of the eBay batteries, you see it says April of 2020, which is more than two years ago. And the other one also says April of 2020. So there's two possibilities here. These are old expired batteries that are being shipped with supposedly new Mitutoyu calipers, or this is counterfeit battery packaging. They just replicated the package and did not even bother to change the expiration date. Let's take a look at the calipers themselves. Let's start with the four inch. This is the four inch genuine one, and there's a few things here to notice. Note that the plastic molding here is really clean. We've got really clean, fine lines on this little sort of grippy arrow, and you can see that the absolute text in there is nice and clean and has a nice flat bottom and nice sharp features. The same thing is true on the six inch example that I've been using for two years. Again, very nice clean molding here, very nice clean molding on the word absolute. Take a look at the eBay ones. Uh, you can see this, that the, uh, the molding here is much, much coarser and much less distinct. On the genuine one, it's nice and clean. On the eBay one, it's much less clean. And you can see that the word absolute here is not flat on the bottom. It's rounded and mushy because the mold is less distinct or the molding process is different. And exactly the same thing is true on the 12 inch. We have that same sort of mushy set of features. Now, if we look at the genuine one, you can see the text here 
on off, zero ABS, and inch millimeter, you can see there's lots of space around that slash. So it's inch, lots of space, the slash, and then millimeter. If we look at the eBay ones, you can see they are run together. Inch millimeter is together, zero ABS is run together, on off. We don't have the space that's there on the genuine article. And if we look at the 12 inch one, it's exactly the same thing. It's all run together. Now let's take a look inside the battery compartments. Uh, this is the four inch and I can pick, peel this off and you can see We've got two little gold plated or copper strips there on the PC board. And you can see the marking in there says ABS. That is the four inch. Let's look at my six inch one. You can see that it is exactly the same. We've got the same two little gold contacts there and the ABS marking. Take a look at the eight inch eBay one and you can immediately see that this is different. The mold marking in there is not present and we've got a single strip on the PC board because it's a different PCB. And if we look at the 12 inch eBay model, same thing. This has a different PC board in it than the genuine Amita Toyus. Just glancing at these, I see a couple more things that are pretty evident. If you look at the machining around the uh, fixed jaw here, you can, or is that, yes, yeah, the fixed jaw, you can see that we have a nice large radius there in that corner. And if we look at the six inch, we see exactly the same thing, the nice large radius. If we look at the eBay examples, that radius is not there, it is much, much tighter. And the same thing here on the 12 inch, that is much, much tighter. This is a different machining process. If we look at the back of the six inch, you can see the channel here that is milled for the depth rod. And this was end milled with on a milling machine. In fact, the surface finish in the bottom of that is really excellent for a, uh, an end milling operation. If we look at the 12 inch or this eight inch eBay, you can see it is not machined that way. This was either ground or milled out on a horizontal machine. And exactly the same thing is true of the 12 inch. And you can see that the surface finish in the bottom of that groove is just atrocious. And you compare that to the genuine Mita Toyu, it's a completely different process. Now on the four inch, the four inch has a different style of depth rod. It has a round, depth rod instead of a, a sheet metal depth rod. And so this one is milled using this process, but you can see that the surface finish on the bottom there is very, very different from what we see on the eBay, um, on its eBay counterpart. Let's go ahead and put the batteries in these for the first time and just see how they power up. This is the four inch known genuine unit. Put the battery in, put the battery door on that. See it powers up. We've got five uh, blinking dashes and I will go ahead and press the origin button. And you saw it just sort of went across the little Larson scanner for a moment and now it's come up as zero. And if I switch it to inches, we have a zero followed by a decimal point and four large zeros in inches. Now that last digit is only a zero or a five, but uh, it is a full size digit. Now I haven't actually powered up the other one, so I don't know if they're any different. Let's take a look. Here is the eight inch unit from eBay. And I immediately put the battery in and it does not, boy, the battery is hard to get in there. It does not come up with dashes. It comes up immediately with zeros. Okay, if I switch it to inches, we do still have the same display, but the behavior on power on is different and that would be consistent with the fact that the uh, circuit board we can see in there is different. And just for uh, comparison, here's one that's been powered on. This is a genuine one and if I take out the battery, and then put the battery back in. It behaves the same way with the flashing dashes. So this isn't just a first power on thing, it's a first power on with a fresh battery. Okay, let's try the 12 inch, 
just for completeness. And it does exactly the same thing that the eight inch did. It does not show the dashes because this is a different circuit board because this is not a genuine Me to Toyo caliper. There are a few other interesting things that we can compare if we look at the graphics here on the tail. This is the four inch genuine one. You can see we got our nice, long, graceful swoop going up well out over the O of absolute. Here is the genuine six inch, same thing that long, nice, elegant swoop. If we compare that to one of the eight inch eBay ones, you can see that it is much thicker and it is much shorter and doesn't have as long of a curve and it cuts off a lot sooner above the word absolute there. Same thing on the 12 inch. It's at a different angle, it's thicker. The colors are different. I don't know how well that shows up on camera between the genuine article and the eBay example. Um, but that's another thing that I noticed about these. One other thing that stands out just looking at it is the origin button. This is the genuine four inch. And if I tilt it up on edge, you can see that the origin button sticks out proud of the surface. Here is the genuine six inch and you can see the origin button is proud of the surface. Here is the eBay, the eight inch eBay example, and you can see that button is actually recessed. And the same thing is true on the 12 inch model as well. That button is recessed. So it's another difference with the eBay units. One other thing that I noticed, if we look at this, this is the genuine six inch, and you can see that those tension adjustment screws for the beam are nice and centered in the hole. Here's the genuine four inch. Same thing, nice and centered in their holes. Here's the eBay eight inch, and you can see they do not line up with those holes at all. And here is the eBay 12 inch, same deal. The plastic, uh, the plastic mold um, makes a part that does not line up with the actual screws in the caliper itself. As long as we're here, we might as well look at the labels on the back. This is the genuine four inch. A uh, couple of things to note. One is the text is nice bright white on kind of a matte black background. The diagram showing the buttons, those are nice open rectangles. If we look at my two year old six inch, we see basically the same thing. It's a little bit worn, but it's still nice bright white text. The rectangles uh, illustrating the buttons are open. If you look at one of the eBay examples, you can see that it is a glossy black and it is not nice bright white text. It, I can't tell, maybe this is laser engraved or something, but it's a very uh, dull gray color. And you can see that the rectangles here representing the buttons are filled in solid. And the same thing is true on the 12 inch. I did check and the serial numbers on the back of these does match the serial numbers on the paperwork. So at least that was done correctly. There's one more test that everybody wants to see and that is power consumption. This is the genuine four inch Mitutoyu caliper and I have these uh, test leads clipped onto the battery terminals and they go back over here out of frame to my Rigel DP832 power supply set to exactly 1.55 volts which is the nominal voltage of these batteries. And I have it running through my multimeter here set to microamps. So I will switch that on. And this is the genuine caliper powering up. You can see it's using 1.1, 1.0 microamps. It's still in this range. Let me press the origin button and let it initialize. So now actually measuring it is consuming 6.2 microamps. And actually, as it sits there, you can see the current fluctuating quite a bit, but we're between, we're under, under six microamps as it sits there. Now let me power it off. Power it off, the current consumption is dropping, 0.9 microamps, looks like about where we're settling. So the genuine, the genuine article is using less than a microamp when it's off, and under about six microamps when it is powered on. Okay, here's one of the eBay units. Let me power it on. I haven't changed any of the other settings. 
And immediately on power up, you can see we're drawing 15 and a half microamps. If I move it, it doesn't really change much. We're sitting here at 15.3. Just let it sit a minute and see if it starts fluctuating like the genuine Mitutoyu did. And it looks like no, it's drawing 15.4 microamps, 15.3. Okay, let's power it off. And the current consumption is dropping down to 13.8. So this is about 14 times the current consumption when it's powered off of the genuine Mitutoyu caliper. So given that these run on the same battery, this is gonna have uh, 1 14th of the battery life. And that's assuming that it actually has the same kind of uh, cutoff voltage. Actually, let's try that. Let's power this back on and let's dial the voltage down and see what happens. Okay, I've reconfigured this so that we're reading the voltage here and I will dial down the power supply and let's just see what happens. Let me move this so that we have a reading. Minus 2.6 millimeters, that's fine. We'll just leave it at that. And I will start dialing the voltage down. 1.54, 1.53, and I'll just keep clicking this down and let's watch the display. Whoop, did you notice that? The reading changed, it was only by a hundredth of a millimeter. Probably not a big deal. Keep going. Here we are at 1.3. Is this still functioning? Yeah, it looks like it's still functioning. Let's keep going. Up, oh, and there it goes. 1.16 volts, and it has gone bonkers but there's no warning, it just starts doing weird things. Let's try the uh, genuine Mitutoyu and see what it does. Okay, let's power this up. 1.55, we'll go ahead and zero that. And let me just move it so that we have some kind of a reading. And let's do the same thing. We'll just start dialing the voltage down. We're at 7.86 and let's see what happens. Oh, and there's a B right there. We're at 1.34 volts. Let me take it back up and see where that goes away. Okay, 1.41. Now the terminal voltage on these batteries is supposedly 1.55, so we're well below the terminal voltage. And as we dial this down, the little B comes on to indicate that we have a low battery. And of course the caliper is still functioning normally, but it is already warning us. Okay, let's see what happens if we keep going. But again, note this is very different from the behavior of the calipers that we grabbed off of eBay. I was just uh, cleaning up here and I noticed something. Uh, the eBay calipers have a plastic sheet. It peels off of the LCD and the uh, genuine Mitutoyus do not. Well, those are the differences that I noticed. If you notice something that I didn't call out, go ahead and put that down in the comments. But are the fake calipers still worth the money? It's an interesting question. I mean, if the fakes are getting better and better, doesn't there come some point at which they're good enough and they're worth their price? Well, maybe, but if that were the case, why trade on somebody else's name? Why not just make a quality product, market it under your own brand, and compete on price? Just saying. You should know that Shars is a supporter of the channel. This particular caliper predates that. I bought this with my own money four years ago, and this has been my daily driver. And just uh, for comparison, the price of this new is less than the fake meat to you, and you know where it came from and they support it. But you know, take that as you will. You should probably ignore everything that I say since I do have a relationship with Shars. That's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and head on down into the comment section. I have a feeling this one's gonna be pretty lively. Just keep in mind that counterfeit goods are big business. 
and that business depends on creating enough confusion in the marketplace that at least some people will believe that maybe, just maybe, that $300 Japanese tool being offered new on eBay for 100 bucks might be genuine. I mean, not you. You're smarter than that, but someone else might believe it. Thank you for watching.